Hello everybody, welcome to your Aquarian Living reading for the week of February 25th, 2018. So I immediately, before I even tapped in with the energy, I felt drawn to pick up my piece of blue fluorite, the sphere. And I haven't worked with this piece a whole lot. I, I purchased, it's probably the most recent one that I've purchased. And I just wanted to read to you the themes. When I, when I get a new crystal, I sit with it and I allow it to just tell me what wants to come through. And this is on my air team. So it's about our mentality. It's about how we process. And I feel like many of us, the majority of the planet, is going through kind of an upgrade of sorts in terms of how we choose to process our world because things appear to be cracking and I would argue they are cracking in order to come together in a new way. So if, if we start to think about concepts like that as a new way of viewing the world instead of the sky is falling, it's the new world is becoming. Okay, so this piece of blue fluorite, this is the name of it for me, uh, you know, as a messenger working with it, is depth. And it has a very scorpionic feel. It's like blunt honesty. Other, other notes I have about this are being clear in the points to make, or being organized and disciplined, honoring others' viewpoints, mental clarity, openness to one's own brutal honesty, and getting real with oneself. So it's like that really raw kind of place that when we give into it, it can feel really good to be in that space, to know that you're just being real. Um, difficult conversations are easier to have when we just get down to the very base level and say, I'm sorry, this is just, I need to tell you how I feel. And really, nobody can argue with that. I feel like that's the point that we're coming to this week is that it's okay, no matter what viewpoint somebody has, if they're giving it to you in a very genuine and honest way and you're doing the same, that is really the best that we can ask of one another. There, there isn't one right way. I will keep saying that because I watch things play out, particularly on social media, enough that I really need to take a break from it because it's exhausting. And I don't blame anybody for what they're putting out there, but it, you know, in the putting out there of it, it just keeps swirling. And the insinuation is, but you're wrong. You don't get it. And I just feel like we're coming to a place where people just are getting brutally honest and you're getting brutally, brutally honest with yourself. And just, it's all you can give is how you truly feel. And, and just like the bully on the playground, there's really nothing the bully can do when you just simply say, okay, you want to be that way? You know, and you just like turn on your heel and you walk the other way. You don't engage because that continues to stir up the chaos. And to begin to see, again, this is air, the element of air. This is our mentality. It's how we process our world. We take in through our senses and we process. And then we deliver through our communication. That is also air. Um, our own viewpoint. And I just think we're getting brutally honest, brutally clear in how we feel. And that sense of clarity and getting down to just the base meaning for you is a very strong component of this week. So our symbol for this week is Scorpio 22. And that reads, Hunters Shooting Wild Ducks. Now the 22 is connected to the knights in the, all the knights in the tarot. Um, it's very adventurous, it's fire-powered, it's energetic and spirited, and the knights just sort of charge in. 
They're very young at heart, but they do have a little bit of experience, enough to be able to speak intelligently. But there's a lot of spiritedness, okay? And that's the 22 energy, which is also a master number of the master builder. So it's like, you know, you're being productive and building something new that you feel passionate about, and that's enough. I also, before pulling this symbol, I asked of the numerological cycle, which is 1 to 9, where are we at for this week? Where in the cycle are we? And we were at the 4, which is interesting because Scorpio 22 reduces down to 4. And that is about solid foundations and being a dedicated worker. So this is the dichotomy that we're dealing with this week, and it's why this brutal honesty and being able to see other people in that light too is that there's this, the hunters shooting wild ducks, that that night energy of like, ba-bam, like, all right, we're going out on the hunt, and we're all pumped up, we're all dressed in our hunting clothes, we get the guns all cleaned, like we're just, there's a passion there. Okay, and it's something that you're interested in, but you know, there is a reverse side of that. Like, there is, there are animals being hurt by this, you know, for fun. There is fun indicated by this symbol. And there, there's a sense of being with the four cycle, there's a sense of being very solid and grounded, and that will serve you this week. The four indicates where our greatest. Our greatest anchoring can be when we're living in this Aquarian age, that's why I'm doing these readings, is because this is the weird energy that plays out, hunters shooting wild ducks. It's, and that's a scorpionic symbol, and this is Scorpio to me, too. And it's that it's okay to be passionate. It's okay to be passionate, but see that other people are also equally passionate. So maybe you're not into shooting wild ducks, but instead you're into snowboarding. And there's just as, you know, there's risk for that. Risk for anybody else who is on the hill. Risk for your body. Maybe you love to um, do skydiving. Or maybe um, you like to sew. Somebody like me looks at working with a sewing machine and I'm like, Oh my God, I just lay it down for you because I don't know how you work with that machine. I'm petrified of it. For me, that is risk. <laughs> I can so see my finger going right underneath that little uh, lip where the, where the, see, I don't even know the words. I think it's called a foot. I could so see my finger going in there, you know? So, there's different levels of risk and passion and adventurous spirit and a belief in something. We all have these different levels of that. And so what if we're just brutally honest with ourselves and with other people that it's okay to have that? And the four energy indicates like being solid, just pay attention to where you solidly are. And never mind trying to control everybody else. Who cares? You're never going to win that battle, I hate to tell you. Because the other is just as passionate as you are. Okay? And this is in any, in any area of life. So the best advice that I'm getting, you know, as a messenger here for all of us, myself included is that, you know, to remember to go back to it's about your journey and it's about being solid in how you feel and about getting down to that raw level um, I'm, I, where all you can do is to speak your heart. You can tell I'm having a hard time getting these words out because I feel like some of the people listening and there's layers of me who don't like going there. I don't like being in that place. But it's almost like those moments when all you can do is cry and just say, I don't know what to tell you. This is how I'm feeling. 
I just have to let you know that this is what I'm seeing or this is what I'm feeling. Remember, we're processing everything through here. That raw emotion, that's how we're processing it. Okay, so it's either how you're seeing the world, how you're feeling the world, how you're taking in through your senses, and there's a lot to take in. But what if we just get down beneath all of the rhetoric and all of the you you know use of certain words and people getting ignited by that? And this goes way beyond the whole gun thing, you know, which is everywhere right now. This is about matters within your own life, matters within your work, your home life, with friends, with family. It's anywhere you're feeling this kind of upset. And maybe you don't see things the way other people do and you feel misunderstood somehow. And it's just all you can do is to be your raw, wild self and to say, I don't know what to tell you. This is, this is how I feel. And nobody, nobody <laughs> has a right to cross you on that. When you get down to the raw grit level and you have tears in your eyes as you're saying something and you're just, you're truly speaking your heart, that is what that blue fluoride is about for me. It is the deepest of the deep. It's Scorpio to a T. It's raw. And it gets down beneath if you think about an ocean, it gets down beneath where all the wave action is happening, which we see very clearly in our world. It gets down beneath that and you're getting down to where the sand and the bottom is. Scorpio will not let up until it gets to the bottom. And so that's where the calm is in the sea, is at the very bottom because there's no action there. It is whatever is, is. And you know those moments in your life, just as I do for myself, when you get to that place where you say, you know what, this is where I'm at. And I, I don't know, I can't change myself. What you see is what you get. I can't change my point of view, or I can't be something you want me to be that is not true to me. And that's all you can bring this week. But this is beautiful. This is Aquarian living. This is getting to that uniqueness, that individuality of who you are, that Aquarians are not going to change for anybody, and they will lose people over it. But they would rather lose people than to not be themselves. When they, you're talking true Aquarian age living, that's where we're getting to. Is people have a right to feel that raw place, which I, I really don't want to use the word raw. I want you to think about the ocean and how calm and safe feeling and just like bedrock. Remember the number four, solid foundations, dedicated worker. This is the, the bedrock of who you are and to get out of where all of the tides as the ocean is churning, the upper levels have all of this turbulent energy. And there is no productive rhetoric that happens there. There's, there's just motion. And it's necessary. And it keeps the oceans fresh and it keeps everything renewed. There is meaning to that. But some weeks and from here on out, I will always have a, num a numerological place in the cycle that is helpful to us in this wacky Aquarian age. You don't have guideposts in the Aquarian age. We haven't even developed them yet. So the best we can do is to try to keep our steady throughout it. And there are going to be weeks where we're being more adventurous and really getting out there. But right now, what you see in the upper end, like levels of the ocean is the hunters shooting the wild ducks. Lots of passion. Lots of adventurousness. Lots of energy and spirit and like, let's go! There's a lot of that and there's pieces of you that in parts of your life you feel that way. 
But then you can also feel misunderstood when you get really spirited about something. And so looking back to that number four, like four legs on a stool, or like that place in the ocean, under the wave action. This is at the very base. When you bring yourself and you say, this is who I am and this is how I feel. And we will really have accomplished something big as a collective when that's enough. And we can let it lie like that. We can let it be. <clears throat> and I feel Mother Mary with that. Let it be. Just no need to speak out against another because they are just as passionate as you are. And therefore they feel misunderstood when they get that same treatment back. It's the reflective exercise and to put yourself in their shoes and imagine how they feel as they're getting attacked over something that they firmly believe in. There is another way to that and it's coming to this authentic place. And what I really think results out of that are options that we haven't even yet created that are truly a blend of the two. Because you can't pick one or the other. There's always going to be a loser in that situation. But the, the best of both truly can make a solution that could work. Elements of both. And that's Aquarian Age too. It's new solutions. All right. So there is my um, intro. And let's get on to the cards. The, all the cards this week are from what I would call my most blunt decks. And that is the energy of the night that I was talking about and this stability and that very raw, scorpionic kind of place, depth, real, brutal honesty. These decks represent that of all the decks I have. We don't have any fairies. We don't have any soul coaching. We don't have gentle this week. We have honest, true, raw, real, okay? The Magdalene Oracle is up first, this red card. And if you chose this, you have Revelation. Now, of course, every time I look at cards, I just very much stay in the moment and whatever I'm seeing. And I see this as an eye this time. Um, this is about your perception. I go back to that blue fluorite for you. This is about being able to open yourself enough to see a whole new way to look at your world. This could be a, it could be a really miraculous week because a word like revelation is a significant word. That this, you know, it, Revelations don't come up to us all the time. We have to be in a place where we're ready for them. And when you have hunters shooting wild ducks, there's a lot of energy. And maybe you're experiencing a lot, in, a lot of passionate energy around something. And it's that shoot them up, kind of like super passionate. And not everybody gets you. Not everybody understands you. But I feel like the revelation, because there's so much red in this card too, which is very typical for the Magdalene deck. It, it's very root chakra based. The revelation is around these beginnings that we all have and these awarenesses that we all come into over time. You can look at people, um, I think it's, it's sometimes easier to look at people in your family because you've known them so intently over time. And you can see how they have gone through different awakenings through their life as they gather experience. And the red in this card indicates that tie back to it's about our beginnings and it's about a sense of what people feel in order to feel safe. What makes you feel safe? And, and can you see that some other people pick what they pick 
because there is a belief that they are safe in, in going that path, that that is the only right thing that there is for them. And so the, the revelation for you, and again as a messenger, I'm always see, uh, saying things that have to do with you being the best damn version of yourself and not trying to worry about everybody else. Really keep your shop, meaning you in this body, your mentality, mind, body, and spirit as clean and clear as you can, and by golly, as genuine as you can. You know, be kind, but speak your truth. I mean, be true. And so I do get this sense around beginnings, understanding, with the revelation being in the understanding that so many decisions that you make and that others make are from a place of needing safety and also avoiding fear. Fear is at the root of really everything that drives us towards some big revelation. Something big comes out when we have to face a fear of some sort. And it can be on the physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual level. And these times are significant. The, the pendulum swing is so big right now. And we see it with the Scorpio 22 hunters shooting wild ducks. Some people see that as total fun. They, they take those, like, they relish in choosing guns and, and what it can do and cleaning it. And I mean, I grew up in a house with a, an avid hunter. And I, as a child, watched him, you know, clean his guns and how I loved the smell of hoppies, I think it's called, the gun cleaning solution. I, I still can call it up to this day. I love that smell. And, um, you know, there's that school of thought. And he would tell me about, actually, how hunting was really necessary in order to thin the herd, in order to for there to be some natural selection, and that that animal then would not simply just die and be wasted, but that we actually ate the venison. And so there's all of these schools of thought around why people love what they do, and that's what the symbol is about of hunters shooting wild ducks. It's this it's a passion, and there is adventure involved in it, and it's something that makes people incredibly happy and, and feels fulfilled. And then, to other people, they might look at that and go, Oh my God, how could you possibly? You know, these docile creatures and blah, 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 you know? It's all good. There's room in this world for all of that. But it's the hunters, it's the shoot 'em up, it's the, it's that very aggressive um, release of of instinctual passion, on any level about any subject. That is what is riling up the big ocean right now, and it is all. Remember, it's at the top part of the ocean. Can you get below that in order to have the big revelation? And I feel like the revelation is around a topic having to do with facing a fear, understanding that we're all in, we're all functioning from this instinctual base of needing to be safe. And we can, when we start to see one another that way, again, I feel this raw place within me that's like you, you just can't get any lower than that. The root chakra in the body is as low as it gets. Like, this is base, people. This is fiery red. It is everything that we were built from. It's about pure survival. Food, shelter, water, clothing. What do I need to just take care of myself? You, When you get to that level, you know you're dealing with the base. Like, everything else be damned. I, I just need to get back to the basics again. And when you start to view other people, because remember, I'm seeing an eye in this, you start to view other people as 
they're also processing their world on the most basic level. All of us are processing our world from that root chakra area, from that red, fiery, passionate place of pure survival and instinct. Fear is a huge word. It's a driver of so much of that. And how it can really rock your world when you start to see that everybody is operating from that. Every single person is operating from that. And it's... Um, it's a real challenge to then look at somebody that you just so detest or you, you can't understand their actions and they can't understand you. But to always go back to that base place and to use that as a new revelation, a new mental structure from which to begin processing in a different way. Okay? The second card is from the Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides by Stephen Farmer. Walrus comes up. And this says, Remain vigilant about the current situation. Pay attention to signs and omens and let them dictate your choices. Feels very much in the moment. And I do feel a sense of defensiveness because the, the teeth in this image really drew me right away. Um, and I do feel that sense when I was reading this about um, being this, the four cycle that I talked about in the intro. Solid foundations, being dedicated, stay grounded. Just hang tight in watching what is playing out. And I feel like the teeth is about you not remember the symbol we've got hunters shooting wild ducks that is the indication of the energy that is playing out the numerology that i'm going to offer every week is the best indication we have as to understanding where we are in the cycle what can serve us okay so what i'm getting for information here is in this, particularly in this new Aquarian age, remember this is really new. We're stepping into this for the next 2100 years, okay? The things, and, and this has always been true, but it's more um, amplified right now as we shift into the age. And we've just shifted into Pisces, so it's really amplified to when we shift into a new zodiac sign. Um, it's going to be crazy, I think, when we shift into Aries. Um, but when, when things occur in our world, it's like something happens in the world, and it's almost like we are guided, if we're really tuned in, we're kind of guided to go then to the opposite in order to bring this natural... Um, sense of balance to the whole picture. It's like these these massive events occur and again this this can be on the global scale or within your country, within your state, within your town, within your house, you know, like you just get as personal with it as you want to get. There's many many cycles playing out here, but they all come back to the four. For, at least for this week, you know. Solid foundations. Understand there is a lot of, sorry, I gotta say it this way, there's a lot of shit just stirring out there. And, it, and more and more you're gonna find that what gets called up within each of us is to reflect back through our, the various levels of our energy field, which is our physical, our mental, our emotional, and our spiritual is to reflect back the reverse. So when there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of rhetoric, there's a lot of there's spin going on in the air. Um, when we think about that ocean that I talked about in the intro, there's a lot of those upper levels that are very churned up right now. And what serves is what remains under the ocean. When that happens, we go to this place that is below that in order to anchor 
and it makes a difference. You, as an individual ball of energy, your energy field is very impactful. As an individual, what serves is to go in the reverse. And so I just feel like the walrus here is indicating this place of strong stance. You've got the teeth, meaning you've got the defensive mechanism built in if you need it, but you don't need to be using that right now. Because, again, we've got hunters shooting wild ducks. This is the indication of the environmental energy. There's a lot of passion. There is a lot of adventurousness in really some people speaking up, again, no matter what part of your life we're talking about. Some people speaking up in a brand new way. They've never felt so charged up enough to say something and the energy is supportive right now of, of really boiling this stuff up um, and people beginning to really speak out when they perhaps have never before and so it adds to those upper levels of the ocean it's so churned up but you as the walrus you know what can serve you for solid foundation, staying dedicated, staying vigilant, that word is in here, is about just noticing, because what the walrus says, pay attention to signs and omens and let them dictate your choices. Notice what is playing out in your world and really make the choice. Do I want to be part of that or do I want to stand in my own true power and speak my own truth, which sometimes means not speaking at all. Because I'm getting the image of the walrus as sort of a quiet bystander who has these amazing tusks and can use those if need be, but most of us think about the walrus as kind of a gentle giant, as a very endearing creature who will slip away if he doesn't like the energy, like, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm going to move on. You have your little thing, and I'm going to move on. And I just get that sense. There's sort of a docile. I like that word for you. That's the feeling of this, is just... And this is that deepness of this blue fluorite, the depth. The depth comes from giving yourself the opportunity to just kind of stand back and kind of take in everything. These are signs and signals to you of the energy that is playing out in any given part of your life. And that you can stand where you are and either choose to engage in it or not. And I'm not giving you an indication either way. But there is more of a feeling of this docile nature, which is just taking in. Take the moment to at least perceive. Because this, this speaks to being very present. And just watch, because again, we're taking baby steps into the Aquarian age here. Things are kind of off the rails right now. It's okay. Things fall apart only to come together in a brand new way. This is, this is purposeful. But you're listening to this because for some reason your energy connects with me as a messenger. And I am known as a messenger that's a bridge. I give bridge messages. I help people if they're in this state and knowing they want to get to this state, I try to give messages that help you to discover this wisdom within yourself. And for each of us, that is different. But that's the context that I'm giving this to you in. And this week, when things are playing out, hunters shooting wild ducks, lots of instinctual, passionate stuff going on that you may or may not understand. It could be either or. This is a general reading. But you will be well served if you could just step back and just perceive.
just take it in. See what you see and then decide from that very raw, remember, under the waves, under the turbulence, from that raw place, a place of, of what do you stand for and, and what feels truly right to you. You can decide that you want to engage or not. There can be value to just remaining a vigilant force. A steady, solid foundation, dedicated worker. Just just stick, like keeping your energy steady instead of adding to the wave action that is going on above you. That Sometimes you can just let the energy play itself out. And then you will know the time that you could step in. That you could really have some important message to deliver, an important part to play, or, you know, be the giver or the receiver of some type of a gift. You know, um, something will occur to you at just the right moment, but there can be huge value to letting energy just play itself out and not necessarily needing to be a mover and a shaker in making things happen, that you don't always have to be a part of that that you can just step back and kind of let it play out and then when it when the time feels right you can step in because that's what the tusks tusks to me represent that level of you know you, you have the chutzpah to be able to make it happen to be in there and you know fighting if you will for what you believe but consider that you also have the option of letting things play out too. And that that can be just such a vigilant, strong, solid foundation which others in your life, no matter the setting, no matter the part of it, even within yourself, others can find so comforting when there's a lot of turbulence going on you know those people in your life and maybe you're that person in your life and others look to you for that. This sense of just grounded, solid, steady grace that nobody can take that away from you. And it, it is this place of the blue fluorite. It is this brutal honesty. It's this place of like, look, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't go any deeper than this. This is this is my bottom. I, I cannot. If you want to go down deeper, then please do, but I can't. And I really can't be up in the turbulent waves further up. I, I'm not comfortable there right now. I don't have anything to offer there right now. Maybe when it calms down a little bit, I can go up for air and have something that is worthwhile to say that helps me and helps everybody. But until then, I'm just going to kind of stay here and I'm just going to keep doing my life the best that I can. Very, very strong messages, just really simple but like foundational this week. The last card is from the Andera Crystal deck. And you have Andarian Amber. And I'm going to read to you what this says, and I want you, as I'm reading, to pay attention to what jumps out at you specifically. I work with Lord Ganesha, the Hindu deity representing the power of the Supreme Being that removes obstacles and ensures success in human endeavors and aids in the fulfillment of your life mission and purpose. I will assist you in listening to your inner wisdom and heart to reveal the choices that are for your highest and greatest good. If you are ever unclear about what path to choose or what choice to make, sleep with me under your pillow and I will strengthen the connection between your mind, heart, and soul. You will walk your path with certainty, clarity, purpose, and power. I bring you empowerment and mental and emotional strength 
to meet life's challenges with an open heart and calm mind. Mm. That, those last two words are what jumped out at me. In Ganesha, um, that's like this elephant-like figure known to be the one that just removes all obstacles. Definitely I'm being pointed back to this blue fluorite. Calm mind. Bottom of the ocean, baby. There are no obstacles in the bottom of the ocean. The boats are not down there unless you come across a shipwreck. But then they're kind of fun to, you know, explore. Um, there's no working motors down there that you have to be worried about getting caught up in a propeller. Um, it's, it's just where all the life, you know, the life lives at that bottom place. And there's just, there isn't the turbulence. What I was talking about in the intro about turbulence really feels important for you with this card. And amber is actually a resin um, that comes from the tree. And it's, it's a different, I have a couple pieces of amber in my um, collections of crystals. And I feel like I want to read you about what Amber on my team uh, brings up. Amber is on my, I think it's my Earth team. So I just want to read you. Um, I'm going to use my pendulum here to figure out, because I have a couple of pieces of Amber. This, this. Okay, open heart. I have a piece of Amber that looks like a heart, literally, but it's very rough. And here's what the message is with this. Trust and faith in moving forward. Even the sticky situations have merit. Not everything is pretty and perfect. Taking joy in the grit. Ponying up and getting your hands dirty. Swirling dust. Moving earth in a way that creates a whole new energy structure. And so what I was talking about with turbulence, you know, it's there's living in the turbulence and then there's seeing the value in the turbulence. So with this piece of open heart, this this piece of amber that I have, there, when I picked it up, I immediately got the feeling of a, a cowboy out west who got, gets up early and is out there, like, working in the swirling dust all the time and is so industrious. At the end of a day, um, the cowboy, the cow woman, whatever, um, has created so much has been so productive so industrious and that is this the sense of this that sometimes you do have to get yourself your hands dirty in order to get to a new place but remember the guidance is around the number four solid foundations dedicated worker so for you even though the calm mind is the part of the description from this card that I was being drawn to, um, the very last two words, as I was reading, I'm like, no, no, none of that. But then I read calm mind. And it's where I feel like for you, some of the other card, the other two cards were kind of in a place that really stays in that under the ocean waves, stays in that really foundational place. I feel like you're actually up and in the turbulence a little bit more, um, especially with that open heart message of the amber. You're, you're getting your hands dirty in some of it, but understand the very important contribution that you can make in doing so. And just... You're, you're probably feeling compelled to take some action in your life and things might not always feel so comfortable or particularly the word tidy comes up um, and they might not always feel fun. They might feel like a lot of hard, gritty 
work. But the importance for you this week, in order to keep that number four, solid foundations, dedicated worker, the important thing is to have that calm and clear, remember this honesty, this depth kind of energy, that calm, clear mind. And so what I'm getting an image of is at the end of every day, like if you're going to work and things are kind of turbulent there or things are turbulent at home, it's wherever the turbulence is. I don't get the sense that it's every part of your life. But wherever the turbulence is, when you get into the reverse, when you get into the other setting, whatever that is, like let's say work is turbulent, so... At the start and the end of each day, before you get into the turbulent environment, you really are well served to remember the messages of open heart, of the amber. Trust and faith in moving forward. Even the sticky situations have merit. Not everything is pretty and perfect. That there's value in the grit. So you just have to keep coming back and ask this Ganesha, Lord Ganesha, this, you can look online to see pictures. I always smile when I see Ganesha because it's sort of a happy, it's like, like Buddha to me, who's in the background here. Um, a happy figure who's very joyous and just removes obstacles, just his sheer bulk, you like removes these obstacles. Know that you do carry that energy too. So there's value in you participating in some of the get your hands dirty kind of work. That it's not about hiding away. Um, for some people, their energy is so sensitive that it really does help to kind of be in that under the wave position and just kind of step back and not get involved in it because they only add to the chaos then. When you're ultra sensitive, you can get whipped up and just carried away. But I feel like your energy is a little bit more stable and you're, you're like this doer energy. Like, I just need, I need to contribute here. And you're strong enough to handle that. So there's value in the grit for you. However, keeping a clear, calm, calm mind. We got hunters shooting wild ducks, lots of passion, lots of adventure. And isn't it kind of an uplifting way to maybe look at what the grit is? It's just a lot of people who are really passionate. And, and they're really like wanting to speak up and be part of something. And no matter what it is in your life, like there's just, there's a lot going on. But having that clear mind before and after you get in and out of that um, turbulent environment, just really ground yourself. I mean, literally like going for a walk in the morning and or at night Doing, having some time to yourself to just close your eyes and like imagine these beautiful roots going from your heart all the way down through your legs, through the bottoms of your feet, into the earth, and wrapping around the earth a few times. You know, like just having a pure connection to knowing that you're part of the experience here and you want to make an impact. You want to be part of something that really matters. But it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, take on everything either. It's about staying true to yourself. And, you know, think about those cowboys in the West. They get up every day, they go out, they might be dealing with some grumpy animals of one sort or another or trying to shoot a coyote who's getting in their, you know, paddocks and wreaking havoc with some other animals and all of that it you know is helpful to remember it's like you're the cowboy out in the wild wild west and there's shoot 'em up going on everywhere and you just need to keep your property and particularly your body your experience your energy field as clear and calm as possible 
if the cowboy goes in, I can tell you for sure from working with horses, if the cowboy goes in with this energy exuding from him that is so angry and so worked up, the horses know it and they're going to flee because they view that as a threat. So they'll do their flight response. And so know that in order to be productive, it's keeping that calm, clear mind. And, and just you can really exude that throughout your experience and that can be such a source of strength for others and, and you're viewed as somebody who's very crea courageous um, in doing that you know think of the cowboy this week you know and he gets up every day crack of dawn or before and goes out and does this grit work but it's such a sense of contribution and to me that seems to feel really important with your energy but just you have to remember to preserve yourself too the cowboy goes back and even probably in the middle of the day and has a really good, you know, meal and nourishes himself. Um, probably takes a good bath just to get all the aches and the pains out and, you know, gets to bed early so that he can get up and do it again and bring the best of himself. It's about knowing when to nourish yourself too because the grit is out there for sure, but you are a steadying force for that. All right, everybody, there we go. Aquarian living, we're stepping into it. So I will hope to see you next week. I kind of take it week by week as to whether or not I really feel the call to do a reading. I do enjoy doing them, but also I'm trying to balance uh, home family life too. So just forgive me if I skip a week. I really need to, you know, follow my own rules of balance as well. But I will hope to talk with you next week.